Well, welcome everybody to Rasa Developer Summit 2019, uh, the first one we've done in San Francisco. I uh, am kind of blown away by the number of people who registered to, uh, to attend and come here. Uh, and I'll show a couple of numbers about you know, just the, um, the sheer amount of interest. And I think largely that's due to the fact that we got some great speakers. Um, I think there are a lot of really interesting things to learn today. Um, but I'll just start off for a few minutes giving a bit of background and um, sort of letting you know what the, the first set of speakers is going to be. And I'll be up at uh, various points during the day just kind of keeping us on track. So here we are. Like I said, we had far more registrations than we could have dared hope. Um, we sold out. And we've got 150 different companies, probably even more than that by now. Um, you know, people from all sorts of industries, small companies, big companies, startups, enterprises. We've got some researchers here. Um, we've got 23 speakers, and also from a real variety of, of projects, right? We've got indie projects, we've got large enterprises, we've got research talks. Um, I'm really excited about the, you know, the, the content that we've got, the, the sheer variety, and, um, and the depth that we're going to get into today. And on that note, we asked everybody when they signed up, you may remember how much they already knew about Raza, right? Because this is the Raza Developer Summit, and the idea was to bring together the community of people who already work with Raza and or at least know a little bit about it, right? And over 80% of you have, at least to some extent, worked with Raza or at least familiar with it. Um, so that's really cool, and that means we can elevate the level of discussion um, and I'm looking forward to some really great questions uh, for the speakers. And we started selling tickets in March. And I think as these ticket sales tend to go, it was kind of slow and steady. And then all of a sudden, at the end, all the mass of the distribution was right at the end. Um, and the last ticket was sold this morning. So you know, someone snuck in right at the very last minute. And actually, the first ticket we sold in March was to Krishna. Is Krishna here? No? Didn't turn up. Um, the prize for buying the first ticket <laughs> uh, is a pair of socks. Um, so unfortunately, not here to claim the prize. Um, but then there's another prize, which we just made up, uh, which is for the first person to show up. Um, so Sai from Anthem, I'm not sure where you're sitting, came at 7 o'clock this morning. So come here, let me give you some socks. <laughs> Um, we actually had a really good chat for about half an hour before everything got started. So uh, top tip for next time, if you want lots of uh, uh, dedicated time chatting to people, just show up very early. Um, cool. Sorry? The idea worked. The idea worked. Yeah, exactly. Top tip. Um, so you know, why are we doing this, and what have we done before? So we started Raza when we open source Raza NLU, it was the end of 2016. Um, and we just said, here's this NLU thing we built. It's an open source drop-in replacement for whatever SaaS API you're using today. And I think it was just the right product at the right time. We started to get this community around Raza, right? Um, and then a year later, we were finally ready to open source our dialogue system, Raza Core, which we'd actually been working on for quite a while. And the community started to grow even more. So then we decided to host, about a year ago, the first Browser Developer Summit uh, in our office in Berlin. Uh, we now also have an office in San Francisco. Uh, but back then, we only had the office in Berlin. And I think there were about 50 people who turned up. We were very excited about that. And I think we had about 100 or so who joined via live stream. So it's really a dramatic increase uh, in one year time in terms of the, the, the number of people who are interested uh, and the number of speakers we have. And some of you may be aware we launched um, a new product called Raza X, which I'll talk about in a second, uh, back in May. And then today, here we are uh, doing the first San Francisco Raza Developer Summit. So we also told the speakers that all of you kind of already know a few things about Raza. And so we won't have everybody starting off with two slides explaining the basics. So it falls upon me to explain a little bit about the basics, uh, just so we're all on the same page. So how does Rasa work today? So the first part 
which used to be called browser NLU, we've since merged that into one library, um, is to take a message like, in this case, a large one, please, and to take that free unstructured text and turn it into some structured data, right? And what that means typically is identifying the intent, so that's putting it into one of n classes that you predefined, and then extracting these entities, right, that you can use to run a query or something like that, like in this case, the fact that the size of the pizza is large. And then the second step in the process is Raza Core's job. This is now also part of just Raza the library. And it says, OK, take this new information that came in through this message, and let's take the whole context of the conversation into account, everything that's been said before and everything we've learned from the outside world, and decide what's the next action to execute. So Raza Core's job is basically just to predict at each time step what's the next action I should do. And an action can just be sending a message to a user. But an action can just run arbitrary code. So typically, the things you do in custom actions are querying a database or calling an API or using some kind of knowledge base, right? So you can ground those conversations in the real world. You can pull in data. And you can have side effects of things happening in the real world, right? You can say, turn on the lights, and you can make sure that the lights actually turn on. Um, so that's a really key part. And the way that Raza does these two steps of uh, parsing the, the, the freeform text and then making this decision is that it trains models based on training data, right? So you have your NLU data and your stories, which are conversations, and Raza learns from those how to perform these actions and how to help users. Now, that kind of begs the question, where does your training data come from? And so that's what Raza X is about, is giving you a continuously improving system. So looking at the conversations that come in, giving you a tool to turn those into training data and just closing that loop. And that's really, at, at heart, what Raza X is all about. And we just realized that everybody needed a better tool. And algorithms alone are not going to solve this problem. right? We need training data. And then something that I think is exciting for the future is not just to extract knowledge of how to have conversations, but I think you can learn a lot from your users in those conversations. So I think you can actually build a continuously improving system, not just for the training data and the how you have the conversations, but also the domain knowledge that the conversation is grounded in. So that's also a key part for the future in terms of thinking about a system that really learns about your domain and is continuously updated. And one of our research goals is now that we have the tool for doing the annotation, how do we reduce the need for actually doing that annotation? Right? Can we get a good sense of what's a good conversation and a bad conversation? Can we suggest to you what you should annotate? And can we maybe even optimistically add things to your training data and retrain? Can we get to not just a continuously improving system, but a continuously self-improving system, or at least with minimal human annotation? So that's broadly you know, where we want to get to. And that's on our sort of roadmap of getting to what we call level five. So to kind of help you know, us think in different gradations and not just say, well, you've got dumb chatbots and then you've got artificial general intelligence. How do we break this down? And we borrowed terminology from the self-driving car people. And we said, look, there are five levels. And what we're kind of all talking about today and where the advanced teams are today is what we consider level three, and that's contextual assistance. right? So that's free-flowing, relatively fluid conversation within a narrow domain. And level five, where we want to get to in the next five or 10 years is what we call an autonomous organization. Uh, I think we have a couple of talks which will allude to that. And the idea is that you have large amounts of uh, operations, parts of your business op uh, automated um, with multiple virtual assistants coordinating with one another and letting humans intervene and inspect what's going on. And the role that Raza plays in that is to be the standard infrastructure for conversational AI. So the same way that if you add search to your stack, you don't think twice, use Elasticsearch. Uh, if you're working with containers, you use Docker. If you're building chat or voice, you use Raza. And with that said, we have a long way to go. Um, conversational AI is not solved. It's a very, very difficult problem. And so that's why we're here to learn from each other. right? And it's not just to gather and pat ourselves on the back and say, haven't we done a great job? Uh, it's about talking about the things that are working and the things that aren't working. And we specifically told the speakers also to talk about things that they haven't solved yet. Um, because I think that's 
probably the most beneficial thing of bringing all these people together in one room. Um, and so you're all uh, encouraged to ask difficult questions, not just easy ones. And just a quick note that we have a code of conduct, and um, I expect you to all abide by it. The hashtag for today is hashtag Raza Dev Summit. Um, it is in your interest to use it. There may be prizes for using it. The prizes may be socks. Uh, <laughs> we have uh, uh, Wi-Fi uh, for everybody. So if you haven't signed in yet, maybe take a quick picture or log in right now. And if you want to refer back to the agenda, uh, everything's available at the summit. So we've split everything up into four sessions, and we'll have breaks in between. We'll have lunch outside. And we have an after party at the end, which we'll talk about. So then, it's my pleasure to talk a little bit about the first set of speakers that we have this morning. Um, so I'll introduce all of them, and then I'll leave, and they can all give their talks. And you can give them their, your full undivided attention. Um, so the first one is uh, Josh Converse over here. Um, he gave a talk, actually, at the Raza uh, meetup in San Francisco. I think it was earlier this year. And I'm really looking forward to this talk, actually, because it shows what ambitious things a very small team can do. Um, and I think you're all going to get a kick out of just how cool the demo is. Um, then we have Brett from Adobe, another very, very cool project, and one I'm excited about because it uses voice to give um, regular users, at least the way I see it, regular users the ability to use power user features in complicated bits of software, like the kinds of things that Adobe builds. Um, then we have William Arias, uh, who's showing off a very cool indie project, uh, I think a really compelling use case. Uh, it's a very natural fit for conversational AI, helping you learn a new language. Um, and then we have Janani from Optum, talking about operationalizing Raza. And I've been in touch with uh, a few different teams from Optum over the years. And they're a company who are very advanced and have very good technical people. And they've built lots of really interesting things around Raza for their deployment, for enabling other teams to build things with it. And so I'm sure we'll all learn a lot from all of them. So that's it for me. Uh, I'll step off the stage, and then I'll let Josh get set up. Thank you very much. <laughs> 